Hey all, here are OS Reviews. Today we're taking a quick look at the Lockmat Ocean Max. This is a budget-oriented smartwatch that has a rather distinctive looking design, primarily with this bezel that is constructed out of aluminum alloy which they claim is actually formed using a greener process compared to conventional manufacturing, reducing waste and being just more eco-friendly as a result. It comes in three different colors. There's the black, a red, as well as a blue variant, and otherwise has a pretty large 1.96 inch display that you can use to interact with, five ATMs for water resistance. There is a microphone as well for answering phone calls. And then like most smartwatches that are in this price range, it's able to track your heart rate as well as your sleep during regular hours at night as well as track your vitals, including the aforementioned heart rate, blood pressure, blood oxygen. Now, what you won't find on this model though would be built-in GPS. So for tracking your route if you're running outdoors, for instance, you still have to use your phone's connected GPS to leverage that functionality. Battery life on these budget smartwatches though do tend to be quite strong, lasting up to nine days in regular usage, 15 days in the extreme mode, so you don't have to charge it too often, but obviously functionality is gonna be a lot more simple. There is no additional third-party apps that you can download load compared to an Android Wear smartwatch or an Apple watch, but still gets the basics done. You can kind of think of it as a more advanced fitness tracker with a bigger screen, up to 100 sports modes which can be tracked on the watch itself. And then underneath we have the strap which of course can be removed if you want to replace it in the future. By default it goes with the whole kind of gamer-like aesthetic, very rugged with these sharp angular corners, but it still is a regular silicon strap with the logo there on the bottom. And it does use a magnetic Pogo contact system for charging. It takes about an hour and a half to fully charge up, so not too bad, especially considering the slightly longer endurance of the 650 milliamp hour capacity cell inside. Otherwise, taking a closer look at the watch, it again has a very distinctive design. It's kind of a love it or hate it situation with the kind of paint going on, on the outside there, but it definitely looks distinctive. You have a very prominent kind of crown key on the side for waking up the watch, and you can also rotate this crown to change the watch face or dial, scroll through some of the lists in the UI as well, and it's a fairly bright IPS LCD screen with good viewing angles, although OLED of course would have even better contrast and there is no always on display mode as a result. The screen is flat and technically slightly recessed below the bezel here, all made out of a very solid piece of powdered metal, so it does feel very reassuring. If anything though, it's a bit of a chunky smartwatch. So here it is next to the Amazfit GTS2 just as a contrast, which is similar to an Apple Watch. Now on the back here, we also have this interesting carbon fiber-like texture, charging contacts, as well as the microphone, and that is more or less it. So quite simple. There's a small speaker on the side as well. Maybe the only thing I would like to see change from a design perspective though would be having the ability for it to customize this front face or bezel by removing it perhaps magnetically. You can snap on other colors or textures that might be even more discreet. But as it is, the Ocean Max is completely built on end. You can't really remove any of these pieces. So taking a closer look at some of the built-in watch dials, again, all of these are really taking advantage of the whole theme going on here, but it is at least a sharp enough display that everything looks quite clear. And if we swipe down here from the main watch dial, you can find some basic functions, including including a night mode, blocking any notifications. The brightness of the screen can also further be cranked up at the maximum mode, although there is no auto functionality. There's also a kind of flashlight mode that can turn the entire screen white so you can illuminate some subjects in the dark. And it feels like a decently responsive overall UI for the most part, I would say. If anything, I will say just turning on the watch when the screen is off, as you can tell, does take a split second longer than what I would really prefer. But aside from that, when it's actually on, it still seems to be reasonably responsive. Responsive. You can also save a barcode of your choice onto the very top here. So this can be, for example, your social media profile if you're trying to add other friends more quickly, or perhaps a membership card of some sort as you're making purchases outdoors, even though it doesn't have built-in NFC. It still is a neat software trick, I would say. The first widget shows your activity status during the past day. The ring here will go all the way around once you've reached your daily goal. You can take a look at steps as well as distance walked. Next page over takes a look at sleep status during night hours, it also gives you a quick rating, and you can also take a look at more detailed statistics, including times you've waken up, REM, light, and also deep sleep. So it shows a little bit more granularity than many other past smartwatches that we've seen. 
making good use of this larger display. And similarly, we get a bit more status at a glance using the heart rate widget, which is on the next page, also tells your heart rate zone. Next page over takes a look at your blood pressure, which is really just an estimated metric. It will basically take just your heart rate as well as SpO2, and then based on preset algorithms, give you kind of a rough range. It's not truly medical grade on that stat, but heart rate and SpO2, aka blood oxygen levels, are true sensors. Though I will say SpO2 typically requires you to be still for about 15 seconds to get a accurate reading compared to heart rate, which can be continuous and recorded automatically during the day. Next tab over takes a look at your weather status, and it is presented in a fairly elegant way. We can take a look at the sunrise, sunset time, plus highs and lows for the next five days ahead. A fairly intuitive UI interface. Next tab over, take a look at your stress score, which is also a metric that is mostly derived from heart rate, but it also tells you if you're feeling maybe a little bit more stressed versus relax and percentage of the time that you've been spending during those durations. And then we can swipe over again to see the full carousel list that can be also accessed by tapping once on the main watch face. You can go into more detail for the previous stats that we checked out, as well as initialize an exercise as well. So that can be a session of running, badminton, football, so on and so forth, and that will then track during the entire duration, your heart rate, as well as calories burned. Under phone call, you can also bring up a dialer pad again to make any calls if you are paired with a smartphone via Bluetooth. You can also control music being played back on your phone. There's also very simple stats on here, including a stressed and a falling asleep uh, kind of animation. It uses haptics to kind of give you a subtle vibration and you can breathe in and out with the animations to kind of calm down, which is kind of a neat idea. You can change the duration there as well. Other standard kind of watch-like functions include a stopwatch as well as an alarm that you're able to set directly on the watch itself, which is also rather convenient. And you can also find a countdown, Pomodoro timer of various durations, and then into game 2048. So it's nothing fancy, but of course the aim is to move the pieces around to eventually add and stack up to 2048. There's also a simple calculator, which I do like as a function that can be quite useful on your wrist. And there's also things including cycle tracking that are more useful for women, but I think that's a little bit contradictory because this watch with its ultra durable and large size, I think it's a little bit more suitable for men, but it is what it is. The companion app called DaFit seems to be generic and it's compatible with many smartwatches that we've seen in the past. So you're not going to get quite as much granularity in terms of customization if they had made their own app from the ground up, but it pairs quickly via Bluetooth. So the information presented just provides a little bit more details if you're looking for it on your smartphone app, which also then saves the information and you can look back at it in future weeks and months. The app here also provides you with some histogram views of how you've been performing compared to the population that have been using similar smartwatches, whether you're doing a little bit better or worse, and you can kind of adjust your habits accordingly. So it presents the information in a pretty easy to read manner. With that being said, if you're looking for super deep insights, it won't be quite as detailed in terms of providing recommendations as compared to brands like Fitbit and Garmin, for instance, but for what it is, at least your data, again, is saved in a pretty easy to read way. As far as the accuracy of the stats are concerned, I would say the pedometer is decent. It is a little on the conservative side, but when you first pair it with the app, it does ask you to enter your height, your weight, and your average stride or step length to better calibrate the sensors. Taking about 100 steps in my test, it typically recorded around 90 to 92 steps, so just a little shy of that number, but at least it's better than being overly optimistic, I would say. Heart rate tracking was actually quite accurate compared with brands like Amazfit and also Xiaomi's Mi Bands and Apple Watch. I was averaging pretty much just two or three beats apart from one another, so not too concerning there. Sleep tracking, though, is an area that is a little bit weak on lower-cost smartwatches, and that still seems to be the case here. I just point that out because if you're taking a nap during the day, it's not going to really count that as sleep. You still have to be actually sleeping during the regular hours at night. For instance, between 10 p.m. and 9 a.m., that's kind of the typical hours that it will try and track your sleep, so it's not really 24-7. So it gives you a good rough estimation, but if you're not sleeping within that set window, then it's going to be more hit or miss. Luckily, the SBO2 and stress monitoring metrics were also quite good compared to the competition, not too far off in my testing. Now, in terms of other tabs on the app here, there is another My Watch tab that allows you to customize the watch dials. So by default, it holds the four that we saw there from before, but you're able to add a fifth watch dial and push it into memory. 
but you can only keep one of your own watch faces that you push over at a time before the memory runs out and it just rewrites over it. So do wish that the memory would have been a little bit larger, but it's functional, and at the very least they give you a pretty wide catalog of custom dials that you can pick between. It's actually very extensive and surprising for a budget smartwatch. So for example, under new faces you can find a very long list that almost never ends. You can continue to scroll all the way down. A lot of these can be more animated, others which are more analog and professional, and just take advantage of the larger display here to give you plenty of options and choices. Many of them actually look really not shabby in terms of detail work as well, and there are other tabs as well further categorized by art, funny, colorful, modern, classic. Now maybe the only downside is similar to waking up the watch here if you're pressing on the dial, it just takes a split second longer than I would really love when you are pushing over watch dials. More specifically, around a minute to a minute and a half to completely download and then push it over to the watch via Bluetooth. Perhaps it's a downside of using a app that is also providing services for other smartwatches and maybe the servers are limited, I'm not too sure there. That being said, plenty of customization options, which is still nice to see at the end of the day. You can also set what types of notifications from social media, email, text messages you want to pass through to the watch. Plus, you can add alarms as well as set up the aforementioned e-card or QR code that you can save onto the watch as well. Advanced controls allows you to toggle between 24 and 12 hour formats, as well as what types of stats you want to track, whether you want to be on continuously or if you want to turn off the continuous 24-7 tracking for heart rate monitoring to extend on the battery life. So that is more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Lockmad Ocean Max, and I think it's a fairly good representation of what you can expect on a low-end smartwatch here in 2023. Nice to see some subtle incremental improvements when it comes to UI primarily, making things just a little bit more intuitive, as long as you keep your expectation tempered that this is still kind of like an advanced fitness tracker more than anything, I think you'll still be mostly satisfied if you like the way that this watch looks. You can learn more details if interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews, that's been the Lockmat Ocean Max.